Hi, everybody. I hope you're all staying healthy out there. These are unprecedented times. And I think in times like this, we're all trying to find new creative ways to connect. And that's no different for us here at PXG. We're trying to do the same exact thing. Uh, my name is Alex Dote. I work at PXG headquarters in Scottsdale, Arizona. And today I, along with all of you, have a really awesome opportunity to sit down with 12-time PGA Tour winner and two-time major champion, Zach Johnson. And here he comes. Suspense. Boom. Drum roll, please. Hi, Zach. <laughs> Hello, Alex. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? Doing fine. Doing fine. Different kind of routine, different kind of day. But actually, the different is becoming the norm, unfortunately. Uh, I know. But it, we're, we're good. I mean, it's homeschooling. It's, um, you know, trying to keep the kids somewhat entertained and, you know, engaged. Fortunately, we're, we've been lucky. I mean, they're they're not overwhelmed or underwhelmed. I mean, they're they've been very cooperative for the most part. I mean, I I, I gotta you gotta extend some grace there. So I give them give them a lot of uh, credit for that. Uh, well, I should give my credit to my wife because she's <laughs> really the one that's, that's got the you know keeping the ship afloat. But um, we're good. I mean, we're, we're probably better than we deserve. Absolutely. So, you know, the PJ Tour announced it's suspending events through May 10th, PJ of America postponing the PJ Championship due to all of this. You're holding up okay. Family's okay. It's been a few weeks. Other than that, anything? How are you handling being home like this? Well, yeah, no, I mean, it's like, again, it's, it's just a different, it's unprecedented, obviously. It's a different mm -hmm. time right now. I mean, if anything, I think, you know, it, it really puts my work in perspective, it probably puts sports in perspective. Um, you know, it's kind of an interesting, I don't know what the word is, dichotomy where, you, you know, you have golf and, and the fans behind it, the entertainment value behind it. And then for me, selfishly, the competitive nature and the fact that it's my profession behind it, you know, it, it, it unifies. I mean, it brings people together. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and so when you take that away, it doesn't matter what sport it is, but specifically golf. I mean, it, it, when you take that away, you know, there's there's a lot of people, there's, there's something missing, um, especially with Augusta around the corner, typically, uh, the PGA Championship behind that. I mean, it, it just feels like there's something missing. However, the other side of that is, like I said, it, put, it puts sports in perspective. It's by far not the most important thing right now um, in, our, in our community and in our society and uh, certainly in the world of entertainment, it, 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 it pales in comparison to what really is important. I mean, and, and in times like this, you really can, I think it, it highlights priorities. It highlights maybe some things you probably shouldn't take for granted and, and things that you probably do need to make a priority. Um, we got a lot of quality time together. I mean, I know that's what I was saying it, that you find the kind of gems in this kind of awful situation and it's those where you kind of just sit back and realize like, wow, as awful as this is, there is, there are those moments that you're like, this is so nice to just be able to be healthy and home with my family. So I'm sure you're feeling the same thing. hundred percent. And my wife can cook. So we have dinner every <laughs> night together. So you're doing fine. <laughs> I'm doing fine. I, I really should not complain. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of families and individuals out there struggling a lot more than I am right now. And, and you know, that's why. I pray for this thing to be gone soon. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we all feel the same way. Um, to kind of add some lightheartedness into this hard time, I wanted to do a Q&A with you. So PXG okay. wants to sit you down, do a Q&A, and we're going to start with some questions from the PXG team, uh, our people, and then we're going to go into some fan Q&A. So you ready? Hit me. All right. Let's dive in. Uh, question one, Zach Johnson. How are you adapting to practice at home and any tips for other people at home or PXG troops? Right. Uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, you know, it, it, it isn't easy. Actually, I've been told by, well, my manager and, and some of my peers that there's a lot of, a lot of my peers uh, are in areas now where the golf courses, obviously the inside services are shut down, but the golf courses are shut down. So mm -hmm. That that part is very difficult. I mean, I, I can't I can't comprehend that. I, I'm not there. We're not there yet. Where I live in South Georgia, the courses are open. The inside services are not. Obviously, uh, no. I'm able to go practice. I'm able to uh, still work on my game. You know, when I can. Um, 
but at the same time, it's still not my biggest priority right now. I mean, right. knowing that I've got essentially what I guess eight or nine weeks off, I think I'm in the middle of my seventh or third week off. Um, you know, I'm trying to pace myself to some degree. I'm really putting a lot of emphasis on my body. So when it comes to practice, uh, I'm making short game a priority. I can do that a little mm-hmm. bit at home. I got an artificial green I can do, and then I can obviously go to the course and work. So, um, with my, my uh, mental coach who lives here, Dr. Morris Pickens, we've kind of put together a plan that I think is good. We're really going to put an emphasis on short game each week, try to get five to seven hours of short game in per week. Um, so making, you know, making, making that the priority. Uh, and then the last two weeks, uh, to really answer this question, now there's a lot of local pros here, a lot of guys that are trying to make the tour or on tour. And so we're trying to compete um, in a very – proper way social distance way yeah <laughs> golf carts you know don't touch the pin that kind of thing right. and we've had two 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 day competitions so that's been kind of fun awesome yeah i think it's all about adapting right now too and trying to do mm-hmm. your best with kind of what you're given um next question for you walk us through your specific pxg iron setup shaft combo all that and why it works for your game sure no a good question uh it's changed it's i guess you'd say it's um I've adapted and and probably, you know, had to change just because of what technology has done. I mean, the ball goes a little bit further to some degree. Um, And I remember it would have been two years ago this summer. uh, I changed the makeup and what I did, I had three wedges and now I've gone to four. So I've got a 60 degree wedge, uh, 56 degree, 52 and 48. um, And those are my sugar daddies. Uh, Gen three sugar daddies uh, wedges. They're, fantastic the uh the guys at pxg specifically mike nicolette has done a really good job on the grinds um mm-hmm. give me a very versatile uh, assortment of wedges that i can use you know around the green and in the fairway and then beyond my wedges uh, i've got uh five irons so nine through five nine mm-hmm. eight seven six five and then i actually go into hybrids <laughs> oh <laughs> that point in my career where I feel like there's more of an advantage there. And absolutely. Uh, the, You're not alone. Are amazing. So mm-hmm. I've got two. There's individuals on my team that would argue maybe I should look into a third. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Mom's the work on that one. But uh, <laughs> that's kind awesome. of kind of where I've gone. I mean and you know the gaps have been a lot better as a result. Uh I mean I'm getting my irons further so therefore I can actually you know, I, I took out a five wood and, and put in um, and just kept the two hybrids in. So I don't really need that five wood anymore. My my high, my lowest lofted hybrid nearly went that far anyway. So I, I've had, I got more versatility and I would say consistency at the bottom of my set where I wanted with my wedges and my higher lofted clubs as a result. Awesome. All right. Now, steering away a little from golf, how in the world are you and your wife keeping the kids entertained at home <laughs> right now? <laughs> well, you know, it's a great question. Um, my 13 year old's pretty, I guess you'd say, entertaining. I mean, he can, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're outside a lot, fortunately. The weather where we are in Southeast Georgia has been, thank goodness, has been tremendous. If anything, we need some rain because the pollen's so bad, but they, they, they should not complain based on what's what's at their fingertips as far yes. as I, um, now the difficulty is like everybody I mean you, you know they want to be with their friends and that's not easy so um, you know we, we they've had friends over occasionally and mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing in the neighborhood local friends but you know we're very careful on stay apart you know right. stay outside obviously um, mm-hmm. I mean they're outside messing around whether it's uh, you know, swimming, um, playing games, skateboarding, riding their bikes, anything yeah. of that Just nature. trying to do anything to keep them engaged, active mm-hmm. in a time where you're kind of told not to. So it's, yeah. it's tough. It, it is. It's not easy. And, and, and I, we gather that. And again, that's where I give them some grace and credit. I've been very impressed with how they've essentially adapted in such a short amount of time to this. Granted. Kids are good at that. Kids are pretty good. I think they're better than we are. I, I I know they are, and, <laughs> and I mean they're they're yeah they're very capable of of you know my oldest is really capable of understanding the times, and uh, I, I give him a lot of credit. I mean they're they're 
they don't complain much. They're outside. They're dirty. They're sweating. They're fishing. I forgot about that. They're fishing quite a bit. Cool. Um, so they're 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 active, and and you know, I guess it's just a long recess instead of instead of being at school. Absolutely. All right, moving back to golf a little bit. You know, you're known as one of the best uh, short game players on tour. How many hours a week would you say you practice your short game? Uh, great question again. I mean, obviously, typically, short I'd say not right yeah. now, but typically. Right. No. 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 I, I get. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I would answer that kind of in threefold. If it's the off season, um. I would say it's it's without question dominates my my practice, and I would say it's probably seventy five to eighty percent of my practice. And when I say I'm talking forty yards and in, but thirty yards and in, um, long pitches, sand bunker shots, and putting. Uh, that's the most of my practice in the off season. Off weeks during the season, uh, it's probably in that sixty percent range. I mean, I'm still you know the keys. The three keys for me are putter, obviously number one. Mm-hmm. My wedges and short game and that thing, or that kind of stuff around the green, and then obviously my driver. So when it comes to during the season of my off off weeks, my driver is extremely important. Uh, I mean, I have to get the ball in play in order to okay. utilize my short game. Um, and then you know, on an on week, when meaning when I'm competing at a tournament week, uh, when my in my practice rounds, it's. It's we have we have kind of a system and some games we play even just for hole to hole. You know, if I play a nine hole practice round, we're we're really emphasizing short game, and then obviously I'm going to do a lot of putting and chipping prior to Thursday. So uh, it is by far the emphasis. It never drops below fifty percent of my work. Got it. Um, what are the key things that you and your caddy take note of when you're scouting a course before turning mm. to play? Yeah, you know it, that's, that's another good question. We're we're pretty fortunate. We've got a great yardage book, a great tool that essentially gives us um, all the numbers, and they're you know GPS, so they're essentially within I don't know less than a foot. And at <laughs> that point, I ain't that good. So let, let's I don't need to be. Wow, well, come on, they're, they're good enough. <laughs> my point is, um, I'm, I'm charting down a lot of things. You know, you you really are charting down shot lines, like where to start it off the tee your run out distances, meaning how far you want the ball to go in the fairway, mm-hmm. where, where the ball typically would land in the fairway, are the fairways soft, are they firm? And you're trying to gauge and monitor, you know, what your tee shot would be. And after that, it really comes down to, you know, like your approach shot and around the green. So you're, you're, you're kind of going around the green and putting down, you know, essentially where you think the pins are going to be. And from there, where do you want to be? Where do you want to miss it? Where do you want to, you know, when can you be aggressive? When do you got to say, you know what, I'm going to take my 30 to 40 footer. All of those things uh, factor into it. So I would say the bulk of the time is around the green, um, you know, trying to avoid short siding, even though sometimes that might be opportune. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes it's good to be in a bunker and two shots on a par five. Sometimes it's better to be long than short. Sometimes it's better to be right than left. So you're just trying to trying to gauge all of that. Uh, and then clearly speed putting. And, and that kind of thing, because speed yeah. is the most important part when it comes to trying to two putt and get out of there with a the bar. Cool. All right. And here comes the fun part. Okay. The fan questions. You ready? Any questions. Hit me. He's sweating. He's sweating already, people. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. No, they're all they're all really nice and easy. Okay, first one. That was my poor attempt at a drum roll. Okay, Jeff M on Twitter. <clears throat> Zach, rumor has it that you have a pretty sweet jump shot. Who would be the other four PGA Tour pros you would take to round out your roster in a pickup game? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, well, sweet jump shot is uh, – well, I don't know about that. It, it, basketball, <laughs> take the compliment. Quit being so humble. Take it. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I mean, I'm 44 now, so let's just – I mean, I used to play a lot of basketball, and, and I still love the game, watch it clearly when it's on. Um, played a lot as a kid. Even in college, I played I played quite a bit. In post college, with some of my mini tour buddies. But uh, if I'm going to formulate a team, I mean, I think my captain's going to be Gary Woodland. I mean, the guy played college basketball, so yeah, and he's very athletic. Uh, never tell him that, but he is uh, very athletic. We'll let him listen. We'll block him from yeah, this video. exactly. Uh, you got to have you got to have some height in there and some more athleticism. I mean, DJ yeah. would be hard not to pick. Yep, makes uh, sense. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw Dustin in there. Uh, okay, one more last spot on your I, team. I heard Troy Merritt is ridiculous, 
and he's a Midwest boy. He has some Iowa roots. I, I gotta go. At the very yeah. least, you'd have a friend. Correct. Yeah. I'm going for it. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Next, Eric C on Twitter. He says, "I wanted to say I admire your faith." Today, which was yesterday, we are celebrating my 12-year-old son, Ryan's three-year anniversary of No More Chemo. Can you share a time or an incident where your faith was challenged and was able to carry you through? My faith was, oh, sure. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things, like, you, you know, I feel like golf kind of picked me. And, and I, I've said that a lot, but I know now, I mean, as I've matured and gotten older, I guess, you know, God essentially said, hey, this is your vocation. This is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the challenge, the challenge for me, I mean, I, I don't know if I can think of one specifically off the top of my head, uh, just because it is competition and I, I just thrive in that. And I, I enjoy that. But I, what, what the challenge for me is knowing that regardless of what I shoot, the most important thing is that I glorify him each and every day. And that's difficult. However, it is my priority and it is, it is, it puts things in perspective for me each and every day when I go practice and when I go compete. Um, you know, I've got some scripture verses on my ball mark that mm -hmm. really help put things in perspective and keep me in tune with what's important. Um, but I, I do know, I mean, it doesn't matter if I win or miss the cut by 10 shots. It's not going to define me. It's not going to, you know, be my identity. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm Zach Johnson, but I happen to play golf. And, uh, you know, when I have that sort of mindset and sort of that sort of, uh, backbone, I guess you'd say it really it just really helps me understand each and every day when I get up what I'm supposed to do and why. And, and, and it really takes the me out of things. Uh, that's a good point to make, you know, for people who are religious or not to just kind of have this motivation that keeps you through and that thought constantly, whatever that is that like touches your heart or motivates you. I think that's so important to keep that, a con especially in times like this, to keep that constant thought kind of gear, those gears turning in the back of your head no, no question I, I don't think it i don't think it matters what profession you're a part of or right. you know or where you are uh um you know in, in the business world or what have you i mean it, it it really doesn't matter as long as you understand that there's more to what you're doing and why you're doing it than just for your own benefit right it, it really does help it's, and you, like you said it's it's kind of highlighted right now mm-hmm um, okay, Chris J on Twitter. I'm sorry for this one in advance. No, it's okay. What went through your head immediately after you hit that ball in the practice swing at Augusta? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's classic right there. Um, <laughs> I if I get if I if somebody tweets me that or posts that on social media, I mean granted it's been essentially a year. Yeah, I can't long. help but not laugh and then I have to retweet it. I mean <laughs> And that's the best attitude to have. It really is. I mean, you got to. You got to. I mean, what, now, what went through my head immediately, I'm not going to repeat. But I will <laughs> say, it was pretty quick after that. I'm like, okay, I, I know that that's nothing. It's, you know, it's a re-T, obviously, and, and go from there. But, you know, of course, I did that. I mean, those that know me well are like, if anybody's going to do it, it's going to be me. I mean, I've, I've essentially done everything. And, uh, and I've done it twice. I've done that twice. So that you know what, Zach, if you did, if nothing else, you brought everyone joy and a smile. A so yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I mean, You're welcome. I, you know, you know the, the old adage or verbiage, you know, well, I guess pros do it too. You know, that kind of thing. So it humanizes you too. People like that. Uh, yeah, I guess. So. <laughs> Maybe you didn't like it, but everybody else loved it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's funny. I mean, it, 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 it is, it's, 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 it's got some humor involved and, uh, I fully you know, you've got a record where you're allowed to do stuff like that. Right. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll probably do it again. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, I, it's, I'm not trying to make excuses or, or even, I mean, I'll probably end up doing it again. I don't want to do it in the putting green. I don't know if that's a problem anymore, but let's, let's keep it on the tee box. I agree. I agree. Okay. Tom B on Twitter wants to know, what's the best drill at home to work on the backswing without breaking something? <laughs> Tom. Okay. Yeah. Well, find some space. First of all, I mean, it, it, let's be honest. Let's find some space, whether it's outside or if you have a, yeah. a big enough ceiling, like, you know, I don't want to get mm -hmm. you in trouble with whomever or whatever. And, uh, yeah. something. but you know, I mean, the other thing is you can actually turn your club upside down and grip it from the head, uh, 
uh, versus the grip and, and it becomes lighter. It becomes a little easier to navigate things and that kind of thing. So mm, that's uh, a good tip. I like that one. Yeah. I mean, if you're just working on fundamentals, especially mm-hmm. in the back thing, I like, I mean, whoops. The one thing I would say is just one piece. It's almost like your torso and your arms and everything go in one piece. The club head goes up. I'm going to back up a little bit here. I love it. We're getting a demo. I like it. This way instead of this way. You don't want to, you don't want to wrist it. The club head goes up and then you just turn to the top of your swing. And from there, you can fire down as fast as you want. So slow rhythm on the way up. I'm going to step aside and do it. Why not? Oh, I love it. Here we are. We're getting a full demo. There you go. Full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's just like big turn to the top and then you can fire down as, as much as you want. So hands up, turn, fire down. And again, you don't have to use the club head. The grip side, you can use the club head side if, you, if you're limited on space and you want to be cautious. Tom B could not ask for any more out of that answer. So 110%. I love it. Okay. Um, Brian M on Twitter wants to know, what's your favorite course to play in the Des Moines area when you were at Drake? <laughs> That's a <laughs> uh, blast from the past there. Uh, you know, this problem, I mean, those that have, gone to Drake and played golf at Drake probably understand this. We're, we were very fortunate and I would even say spoiled to some degree. The country club scene in Des Moines is really good and they were really gracious in allowing us to, to practice and play on a number of facilities. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm kind of old school. So if I'm going to pick one, I'm probably going to pick Wakanda. Uh, it's right there towards downtown by the airport and it's a classic. That's where the champions tour now plays. They were out of Glen Oaks, which is another good one. I mean, shoot, one golf's good too, but they're all good. But if I'm going to pick one, it's, it's, it's the class that gets Wakanda Club. Awesome. Okay, Ross E. on Facebook. He actually had the pleasure of playing golf with you at Glen Eagles back in 2013. There, you recommended to him watching Breaking Bad before it was cool. You were on, on the trend before it was a thing. So what new show are you binging now? Great question. He uh, loves it. He loves it, Ross. Binge television right now is probably more apparent than ever. Uh, so I just watched a documentary, kind of a sad one too, actually, on um, the tight end Aaron Hernandez. Yes, I've uh, seen that come up on my Netflix. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I like football, so it's it, yeah. but it, it, it's sad. I mean, it really is sad. Um, the show that I'm currently watching – uh, my wife got me into it's called Designated Survivor. Kiefer Sutherland. I don't want to explain it. Yeah, don't it. don't give anything away. People hate Resident that. No. It's good. It's good. Um, cool. But I, I know Ozark three is out. I'm gonna yes, watch that. I love Ozark. Have you seen Peaky Blinders? No, I've heard it's awesome. It's the I've watched just about everything. I have yeah, a life, but I've that. watched just about everything. Peaky Blinders is so good. Yeah, I love Tom Hardy. I think he's in that. Me too. I, have you seen Legend? Sorry, now we're getting off topic. But Legend, yeah. he plays. Oh, uh, he, that's good too. That's a movie, right? Yeah, and he's himself twice. Like he's him. He's him and his twin brother, and plays uh, both parts. That, yeah. Is really it's on Netflix. Tom Hardy so. fan. Yeah. Me too. Me too. Okay. Next. Okay, Simon H on Facebook. You are known for your baby drop. What do you normally do to hit the ball straight or when you want to hit a fade? Well, my baby draw. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. um, so I, I, I try to keep things as simple as possible. This is going to sound like my golf coach right now, but he's trained me well. That's why you have him, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. I mean, I, I've got essentially two shots, and I don't want to deviate from there. I mean, granted, you get in certain conditions, you know, where it's really windy or the open championship, you might want to hit a little bit lower use the ground, avoid the, you know, avoid the wind. But for the most part, I set up kind of where I want the ball to start. And then I hit the draw. I mean, that's, you know, my, my draw starts right. And it kind of ends up my target. That's my stock shot. Um, and then I have what I call as a push. So I set up my whole body shifts left and I pick a target uh, parallel where I'm lined up. I pick a target out where I want the ball as if it was my draw shot and I just try to hit a push. I just keep the club face open. I put a little bit more lean on the shaft at impact mm-hmm. more compression, and just push the ball out there. And there, therefore it doesn't, well, one, it doesn't draw much, if any, 
And if anything, it's more of a push to a fade. Um, but I, I really just kind of feel like the shaft stays behind me longer. I lag the shaft more and the club face is slightly more open and I just turn. So those are my two shots with my driver. To say that I'm a drawer of the golf ball, it is accurate. But when it comes to my driver, um, I mean, it's almost, I don't want to say it's 50-50, but it's close. Cool. Um, Eddie T on Facebook. Eddie. Should the John Deere Classic be added as the fifth major? It isn't? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> April Fool's. <laughs> I, I, think, I think the Players' Championship and the PGA Tour would probably have something to say about that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, on, on my ranking system, it's probably right about there. I mean, I'm <laughs> partial to a lot of tournaments, uh, mm -hmm. but that one, you know, that's kind of, I mean, that was a tournament that gave me starts before I was even on tour. So I obviously have an affinity to that event and yeah. always will. I mean, I'm on the board of the tournament. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some responsibility that I have. I love there uh, and the people. So yeah, I love that golf course. I love everything that John Deere does and how they do it. Um, it's up there. But I, I, to pick it as the fifth major, I, I think they'd even say that's probably a stretch. Uh, <laughs> however, it's a highlight. Awesome. Um, let's see. What's that? We're getting down to the last few. Um, okay. David R. on Facebook, what is your normal pre-round routine like? Mm, good, good question. Yeah, so – it, it's kind of changed and evolved, you know, as I've gotten older, um, I really put, I've always put an emphasis on the gym and, you know, that kind of thing, but mm -hmm. uh, even more so now before my rounds, uh, I get to the golf course, ideally about two twenty, two thirty, before my tea time, two hours mm -hmm. before, excuse me, before my tea time. So at that point I go see, uh, my, I guess you'd say my, physio chiropractor guy Troy, mm -hmm. season. so he checks me checks and balances on a table um, just to make sure everything's firing and then from there I go to the gym I'm in the gym for 30 to 40 minutes maybe a small sweat but a lot of dynamic you know movements uh, bands balls just getting everything fired and going uh, in these old golf bones so <laughs> that, that is a priority I, and then I'll go eat and then I, I'll meet my caddy on the putting green about one hour before my tea time. So leading up to that, it's about an hour and a half of work um, before I go warm up and go, go play. So post round, I mean, I might do a little bit of that as well. I might practice a little bit, maybe putt for a few minutes, that kind of thing. Uh, and then there's obviously some recovery things that I'm going to utilize uh, after I get done. Cool. All right. We're, I know we're running out of time, so I'm going to do two final questions. Um, yeah. last fan question at shield Lucas on Instagram says being in the military myself, how does it feel as a professional golfer that PXG is one of the biggest supporters of military and first responders? You know, I don't know how you can put that really in words. I mean, mm -hmm. if I, if I think about it and the first thing that comes to my mind, it's, it's because of the individual behind it. Uh, and when I say that it's PXG Parsons extreme golf, that means it's, it's all about Bob making, the military, the personnel that, that are, are, you know, essentially uh, working for our country, supporting our country and, and taking and, and, and protecting our country. It's all about them, regardless of what division they're in. And then it's about their families, too. So, uh, you know, Bob and Renee give so much. I mean, their foundation, I don't know the specifics. I don't need them with specifics, but I, I do know that they they make that one of their significant giving arms um and as a result pxg and the company behind pxg is loves supporting those that protect us um what a cool initiative i mean to give back to the those that have given us more than we know and, and mm -hmm. quite honestly i'll fully admit i probably take some of that for granted but having military folk in my family um it means it means a lot more to me than probably some so um I'm grateful. I mean, I, I just, I love that Bob and Renee make it a priority and, and certainly how PXG goes about doing it. Me too. I feel the same way. I mean, you know, we are both in the PXG world and I think it makes everything you do just a, a little bit sweeter and meaning more meaningful to know that there's kind of something that kind of that crank we talked about in the back, that it's bigger than just what you're doing. So right. it, it, it feels great. You know, the better we yeah. do, the more they can do. And it's, it's really it's motivational. 
No question. No question. Mm-hmm. Again, it probably puts things in perspective too, right? I mean, mm-hmm. the fact is, is that you, you got these individuals and going back to what I said in the beginning, if golf can kind of bring unity and maybe in a sense of normalcy to individuals that don't have it all the time. I mean, I, you know, on a mission for whatever, six months. I mean, that's, that's awesome. You know, I mean, if there's any way that this game can, you know, help support those individuals, I'm all for it. And PXG, they've done more than I can even comprehend. Yeah. All right, Zach, last question. What are you most looking forward to when golf season returns? Oh, uh, I'd say a lot of things. I mean, there's, you know, selfishly as a, as a professional, I guess, athlete, um, the competition, you know, I'm, I'm ready to get out there and start competing and, and playing against my peers. I mean, that's really one of my motivating factors. I would say, uh, the second part would probably be just, you know, I mean, eliminating social distances, having some, having some sort of social life, you know, uh, Face to face rather than on a screen. It's um, you know how much you miss that because you go people invite you places and you're like, no, I'm okay. I'd rather stay home. I think now everyone is like, I will go to right. whatever event is happening whenever. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I mean, shaking someone's hand, right? I mean, <laughs> things like that. I mean, yeah, um, I found myself talking to neighbors in the neighborhood when yeah. I never would. I'd be like, I don't like small talk. Now I'm like, oh my goodness, is there small talk I can participate in? I'd love to. Yeah, you're doing it now rather than avoiding <laughs> it. I know it's bizarre. Um, People are probably dodging me in the neighborhood. Like she wants to talk. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> but no, I think those are two big things. And that competition part, that must be weird for you to not have that because it's a huge part of your life. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to create it, you know, when I'm practicing mm-hmm. by myself. I mean, I've got games and drills, yeah. that kind of thing right now, but it's it can only fulfill so much. Yeah. All right. Well, we are out of time, but thank you so much, Zach. I really enjoyed yeah. getting the chance to talk with you and learn a little more about you, what you're binging, and how you and your family are doing in this time. I hope that you all are staying safe, happy, healthy, and wishing you all the best. And thanks so much again for taking some time to sit down remotely, of course, and talk yeah. about No, my pleasure, Alex. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thanks to PXG for at least adding some sort of social nature right now. This is great. Yeah, you got some of that social, you know, need that out today, some some sure. kind of thing. I'm sure it's not, you know, the, the cool conversation that you might no, no, have no, with, no, like, I a buddy. Fans. It's great. <laughs> Awesome. And I'm sure they're going to be very excited to hear all your answers and hear you kind of call out their name. I think that's going to be very cool for a lot of them. So thanks again. Wishing you and your family the best. And we'll talk soon. You got it. Be safe. Okay. Bye, Zach. Bye-bye.